Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about PewDiePie. He put up another MTG Arena video. And in fact, he tweeted before that that he is Mythic, which is the highest rank you can get on MTG Arena. So Mythic, Mythic Invitational. Hmm, who should we invite? Should we invite a uh, female magic streamer with 33 hours who doesn't know how to play the game or PewDiePie with his 85 plus million subscribers who clearly can play MTG Arena at a very high level. A lot of you said, hey, you're making too big of a deal. PewDiePie will never play magic again. No, you don't understand PewDiePie. You really don't. Before I became a drama llama, I did MTG Finance. And to do MTG Finance, you have to have some speculation, right? You have to put out a speculation out there. And hopefully it hits. Hope Sometimes it doesn't. But sometimes it doesn't hit, although your reasoning is correct. So, Felix, PewDiePie, he does play and enjoy magic. This is why Unsleeve Media, who's been banned for life, will still continue to play magic, although he cannot ever play at a competitive level. He actually still plays MTG Arena from once and again. Not often, but he ha I have seen him stream MTG Arena. He is not, it's hard to give up magic when you're a nerd and that's what you grew up with. And Felix is a nerd. He's a bro. There's a difference between him and a lot of the other YouTubers I see. The Man of Source doesn't have a local game store. He never does. He never did. He never played at a local game store. He doesn't understand what that community is. To him, a community is people who give him money. That is not the way that PewDiePie or Unsleeved Media or I view the community. And you can look at Tolarian Community College who, I mean, when's the last time you've seen your college professor play Magic with you at f and or pre release Like someone tell me that. Like I can't imagine any NYU professor playing Magic the Gathering. I mean, if you're an NYU professor, send me your LinkedIn. I would love to verify you. And we should connect, by the way, anyway. So PewDiePie is like me. He looks like he got bullied when he was in middle school, elementary school, in high school. He grew up with magic as a way to, and that's why his titles, like Angry White Woman, and if you look at his deck titles, they're pretty hilarious. And it's not by, they're meme-worthy, yes, but it's also titles that a, eighth grader playing magic the gathering with a bunch of other nerds would title their decks if mtg arena was there it was like you put him back in time and hey you're an eighth grade pewdiepie felix what are you going to name your decks and that's exactly what we named our decks that's what we did we didn't I mean, it was funny it wasn't meant to be offensive it was just kind of uh funny for our group and as someone who grew up in a wizard of the coast store so actually, you can blame Wizard of the Coast for all the salt, because if I didn't have that store, who knows if I would still be playing Magic. I can tell you, it's the experience that I had is a lot different than the experience today where everyone is offended by everything. Um, everyone's offended. Oh, I'm now offended. Oh, we have to get more women in Magic. 40% women in Magic. Oh, now these people have to go to Magic, and now more diversity. And then suddenly it's so diverse that you are <laughs> discriminating against the number one demographic, which is male, uh, even under the, quote, 40% male. So people ask me where did that number come, come, comes from. It comes from directly Wizards of the Coast. It comes from their spokes, their talking head called Mero, same guy who tried to vote uh, Mike Long into the Hall of Fame for cheating because he thought it was very entertaining. And he viewed magic competition as a wrestling match where you do need a villain. And the villain in wrestling, if you watch WWE back in the day, uh, they, you know, ha use chairs and you're always rooting against a villain because they're, you know, using, you know, maybe a baseball bat, like out of nowhere to knock out the hero and eventually the hero wins. But it's good entertainment, but everyone knows it's fake, which is not how we should view competitive magic, I assume.
He's also a big fan of the Sir Alex, the number one cheater in Magic. And he's the talking head who gave us the 40% ratio of women in Magic. And then that's all we know. But there are 14 plus million women in Magic right now. All of them just at your local f and you know, just playing Magic all the time. I mean, it's 24-7 of Magic players. But back to PewDiePie. A lot of you were very offended that I said PewDiePie would save Magic and he would continue to make Magic and he would get a sponsorship in Magic and he would do all of this stuff. He's going to get sponsored because what is the alternative? The alternative is he titles his videos exactly what he titled his video and the number one MTG Arena. The number one Magic YouTube channel is PewDiePie right now. He is 200 plus times the size of Tolarian. He's like 200 Tolarians in one. He's, what is he, 400 times size Rudy's Alpha Investments in one. He's bigger than the entire Magic community. The entire global Magic community, if everyone subscribed to YouTube, is apparently, I think, 25 million people who play Magic or who, who have played Magic. He has 85 million just on his YouTube. So the average Magic Pro would be lucky to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. No, no, this dude's got 85 million. So yes, he is the biggest Magic YouTuber. He is the biggest YouTuber who does Magic. He does play MTG Arena, and I know from the way he plays. I can tell you, it seems very strange, but in MTG Finance, I can tell you who's a faker. The guy who says he has 200 moats, he's fake because he's shooting on a potato camera. If he has hundreds of thousands of dollars in magic cards, he his iPhone should be at least like four I mean four K. I mean you have to. Every iPhone comes in four K. Or you might be like, oh maybe he has an Android. Yeah, Android. Okay, great. But he could still have a better camera. He would present it in a different way. Where instead he's talking softly like his parents live in his home or something in his a basement with really cheap looking cabinets in behind and it's just like does this guy really have a hundred thousand dollars to buy moats he really should buy a better home and you know i have seen amazing collections and then on youtube of course it's hey um look at this i bought this ebay lot and for twenty dollars and look at a, a whole playset of zendikar fetch lands here are here a whole playset of Khan's fetch lands are here that makes no sense to me because at no point in time did people not know that they were cons, fetch lands, and Zendikar fetch lands were not valuable. The only way that you find valuable cards in old collections is if at one time it was not valuable, like Mana Servants from Tempest. No one even knows it was a rare at the time. It was a 15 cent card at most. Now it's you know, five bucks because it spiked, price spiked. It's on, I believe, on the reserve list. But so many of those cards that go up in price, it's not like a random person finds a foil Ugin, right? No, at in no point in time did someone not realize, ooh, I can trade this Ugin for some card sleeves or whatever. Even they got absolutely ripped off, they're not going to put it on eBay for 20 bucks, the foil Ugin. Because it, it doesn't make sense. And I watched a lot of these YouTube videos from people, males and women alike, and it's just stunning like how these people are making deck techs and they don't own any of the cards and they've never played the deck. And their deck is theoretically exactly identical to the most expensive version of the deck. Because by definition, that's the winning deck. When even me, with my collection and my ability to trade, I'm not going to make the ideal deck because I don't want the most expensive cards in my deck because they're going to fall off the planet after rotation so you have other considerations i mean it's not as simple as like hey let me just buy the most expensive net deck no you're going to get slaughtered in value maybe you do that one time but then after you lose 95 percent of your value you're going to be like oh well maybe i shouldn't do that maybe i should make you know uh, the best deck i can afford within the parameters of me losing 90 percent of the deck's value after rotation that's how an ordinary magic player plays they don't take a net deck and make it exactly the same because that would be ridiculously expensive and incredibly stupid. 
So back to PewDiePie. He's a real magic player. You can tell by the way he plays, by the way he talks, by everything. When I watch other people, like a certain MTG streamer who has played less than three, 33 hours but yet gets a mythic invitation over Jeff Hoogland, over Caleb, it's like, dude, this person doesn't play magic. <laughs> like, I, I, it's, so, it's like when I find an MTG Finance person and they're showing how awesome they are at MTG Finance and they have two copies of a card. I'm like, is this for real? Is this guy for real? Like... No, man, you need 200 copies of a card if you're MTG Finance. I mean, come on, like, what's going on here? Great, you showed two copies of a card that you theoretically have 200 copies of that you said. Where are the 200 copies? Wouldn't you, like, if you're bragging about MTG Finance all the time, wouldn't you have just simply take a high-quality picture of you holding those 200 cards that just went up in price? Where are the cards? You don't have them. You only have two. You show two copies of the card. They said, oh, you know, I bought 200 copies. Oh, show me a screenshot of the TCG player. You get receipts. There are receipts every time you buy these cards. I have receipts for hundreds of Falias. I mean, they don't go away. They, you can find them in email. So back to my main point. Um, a lot of you expected Felix to go away. A lot of you hoped that he would go away. I'm here to tell you, you never really leave Magic, and that's true for Unsleeved Media as well. The guy who's been banned from Magic for life, treated unfairly, I bet you he still plays Magic. I bet you he still loves Magic. And that's the beauty of the game. Uh, the beauty of the game is I don't have to like you. I don't have to like Jeff Hoogland to play Magic with him, or understand that he's very good at Magic. I don't have to like, like Unsleeved Media to realize that he still loves Magic. The same with Felix. Whether you like him or dislike him, he's not going to leave. Do you know how many hours of play it takes to get to Mythic? I will tell you, it takes more than 33 hours. And at 33 hours, if you are um, a certain MTG uh, celebrity, you get, which is just beyond me, you will get a mythic invitation to play for $1 million because, my gosh, 33 hours is really tough to do. It's really hard to uh, play that 33 hours of MTG Arena, given the interface. So, back to my point. PewDiePie's not going to leave. Hasbro is eventually going to have to sponsor him because otherwise they get titles like White Angry Woman as, their, as the number one trending title for MTG Arena. Google it. Uh, I mean, Google it. Uh, it's all about the PewDiePie. Uh, PewDiePie is larger than every other Magic YouTuber combined. And that's just his YouTube. His Twitter is larger than every other Magic Twitter. And if you guys want to support my channel, I'm not going to ask you to donate a dollar. Can I have a dollar? I lost my job. I'm going to ask you to help me get some justice against uh, the people who have outcasted me from Houston. Uh, this is actually happening in real life and I would love to have the ability to film it all and show it to you on the other channel. Bye!